and we are live. It's time for another CCS Alumni Live. Um, for those of you who are tuning in live and don't already know, CCS Alumni Live is a weekly conversation where we talk with graduates from the College for Career Studies about their journey from high school to career. And today we are talking with one of our illustration graduates. I see who just joined the live, hello. Um, while we're letting folks jump into the live and join the conversation, I'm going to introduce today's guest and then we will get started. So today we are speaking with CCS alum, Shade Robinson, uh, who is a creative generally just a creative person and soul um, and a published children's book illustrator from detroit michigan after graduating with her illustration degree from ccs in 2015 shade has gone on to work as a designer with companies and clients like loudspeaker network quicken loans amarok optum health the university of michigan and columbia university most recently she's worked as a designer for sirius xm and she just has some really dope illustrations, so I'm excited to add Shade to the live. So I'm gonna add Shade right now. All right, and we Hello. are live. What's up? Hey, how's it going? It is going. I am yeah. tired. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Today I had a day off and I'm still tired. I was just That's a real it's, I took it's one off on the creative it. experience. It is. I took one off I took it off on uh Wednesday a day off and the next day I was just like, How am I still drained? <laughs> I relaxed all day. You know, sometimes we need more than a day. Um, <laughs> so I know this is your first CCS Alumni Live. Welcome. I'm yes. excited to have you here and to learn a little bit about your creative process and your journey from high school to career. Um, want to let you know how this works as well as folks who are tuning in for the first time. So I have a few questions, general questions that I'll ask you about your career, about high school, about college experience. Um, and then we're going to open it up for folks who are tuning in live. So if you guys are watching live or you're jumping into the live and you want to ask questions of Shadi, make sure to put those in the little question box at the bottom. Now make sure your questions get answered live. Um, I see already you have some fans watching the live. People are talking about how dope you are. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you're up to these days. What are you doing uh, in the design world now? Um, so I currently work at Sirius XM. Um, so I'm in New York now. And we merged with Pandora a little before I started working there. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we're working on exciting things on the Pandora end. We're kind mm -hmm. of finding that happy spot between what we do and what they do and how to bring that together mm -hmm. as a whole. Um, so working on, since everything's virtual now, shout out to COVID. Um, <laughs> Like, we're trying to balance those events that would be live, that we would mm -hmm. put on, um, that people would be going to right now in the summer, um, and making those virtual. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also looking at bringing on new people. Like, we're looking at different big-name talents that I can't say, but... I know, that's um, exciting. That's always like, I can't talk about it, but it's cool. <laughs> Yes. Um, so we're looking, uh, we're working on creative for them right now. Um, and I'm just excited to see where all of that goes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's what I'm working on now. Just things. <laughs> Exciting things, it sounds like. So tell me a little yes. bit um, from an art perspective, the types of things do you design? Are you designing like promotional material? Are you doing like web interfaces, like graphics for events? Like what types of things are you designing? And are you using a lot of illustration in that work? Um, so, yeah, yes, we, like, I was brought on, um, last year to pretty much give a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my leaders brought me on because I had the illustration background and because I was not fully, I won't say I'm, I'm not a designer, but because I didn't have that background at CCS, mm -hmm. um, like my BFA says illustration, mm -hmm. um, and so they wanted to utilize that. So the things that I work on are key art for major shows. So like the Billie Eilish piece I saw that you put up 
Um, yeah. When she performed at the Troubadour, that was an opportunity for me to use my illustration um, mm. and do a little bit, do something that was different than what series generally would do for um, for key art. And unfortunately for that one, I my work was not selected by Billy's team. Like it, she saw it and everything. Um, they went with Geos, which was amazing as well. But when you get selected for a project like that, then you go on to do everything for that venue. So mm. whether it's like the step and repeat, whether mm. if it's napkins, if there's banners going up, if it's something dealing with the stage presence, if you're doing like the animations when people walk in. Um, example being one of... Uh, the projects that I worked on out, I was super excited for it, but it was, it happened like, it was scheduled for March 20, uh, March 26th. No! Like yeah. right when the pandemic started. Right when everything hit and it was for yeah. Pearl Jam at the Apollo. Um, and so mine actually got selected by Pearl Jam. And so I did like animation screens. So when people walk inside the Apollo, they would see it. Um, napkins cups t-shirts banners steps and step and repeats like a huge there's this huge wall in the apollo that's super long brandy um and it scales from wall to wall pretty much when you walk in the like second like the i don't know what that thing's called but like when you walk in the second door to the apollo all the way down to the like doors for where the theater is mm -hmm. like that wall was it was a whole artwork piece like of a timeline and it was an illustration and it was like the logo that i created and then giving like little tidbits about their albums throughout the years oh, wow. um, oh. because this is you know like this this album meant a lot to them um especially with everything going on and like the album spoke to that Mm -hmm. um so it, it was like a timeline throughout and it was massive i think we got it printed and then everything was like yeah we're canceled <laughs> <No>! <laughs> canceled but aside from you know all the print stuff i work on emails like uh i don't even know like inserts every rank everything that has serious xm i'm pretty much touching like if it's a type of project that i'm touching i'm touching that's cool. So it's it's almost like branding, like you're owning the brand of an event or an experience if they go with your your visual idea. Absolutely. That's pretty awesome. That's so it is. cool. And it, it gives us a chance to step outside. I mean, like those are the projects I really enjoy because one, the designers, we all come together as a team and like we critique, like it's art school all over again. Like we're putting stuff up on the wall. We're critiquing. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Like, and we're sharing like ideas with one another and just mm -hmm. being inspired by one another um and that's one of the things i really like because it does let us step outside of the brand our brand because mm -hmm. sometimes you like ooh, using blue again <laughs> like you know what I mean? my like, comfort zone <laughs> yeah like it lets you go outside of the brand guidelines of sirius xm or pandora like it lets you kind of have a little bit more freedom and mm -hmm. i really enjoy those projects that's awesome. That's awesome. That sounds really fun. It um, is. <laughs> I especially it. because I, I assume you like music. I know most people do. And so it's cool to sort of get into, you know, a musician or a band, whether you like them or they're new to you and like dive into yes. what that visually could look like. That's it's awesome. incredible. And it's like being introduced to new artists like that yeah. I've never heard of. Like, it's really dope. And the energy is nice. Like, I we're not in the main building that has... Um, like everyone come through where sway is and everything like that but excuse me bless you but like first i want to say like uh, my first day when they took me over to that building to get checked in and everything kendrick perkins was there sway was running about like the energy is just really nice mm -hmm. um and like we can go over there at any time to kind of just feel that um mm -hmm. so like just seeing when new artists are coming over i'm like oh can i go over there like rick mm -hmm. ross was there one time and i'm like oh i'm just shimmy on that <laughs> now tell me this are you still going to a physical location to work during the pandemic uh no we have not been in office and mm -hmm. i haven't been in office since march 18th gotcha and we will not be going back in office until 
January 1st if yep. everything yeah, eases so. up. Right. Uh, yeah. I hear that. But yeah, so, I've been working from yeah. home. I've heard, I heard a lot of folks are doing that where you know, even w whether they're working for themselves or a company, like everybody's like, I'm home. Yes. <laughs> That's where I'm doing my art right now. Um, so Gotta stay gonna, safe. Um, mm. Right, exactly. It's very important. Everybody yeah. mask up. Um, so, stay masked up. <laughs> right. Um, a question that I have for you, because in reading your bio, you also, in addition to being a creative, you talk about doing children's book illustration. Yeah. Um, and you have a published children's book. Tell me more about that. Yes. Uh, so being nice is magical. Um, actually had... A musician friend of mine, her homegirl hit me up and was like, hey, I heard you do an illustration. I saw some stuff you did for Jay, uh, Jay Prime. I don't know if I can, you know, put her name out there, but she's amazing. She's an amazing artist. Listen to her if y'all can. Um, but her friend hit me up and was just like, hey, I saw what you've done for Jay. Can you, like, would you be interested in doing this book? And she told me all about the book and what it meant for her. Um, she has a son right now and she wanted to see representation of black children. Um, she's white, but she has a black child, you know, and she has a black husband. So she wanted representation where she felt children books were lacking. I mean, not fully. I mean, we've seen like Vashti come out with like different books now and like Lupita's we got books several yeah yeah like it's a surgence of different books now um but at the time you know like it was just like two <laughs> where you see like dreads or you know like an afro or anything like that so mm -hmm. um that was a major point for her just wanting her son to see some kind of representation mm -hmm. um and then getting across obviously the moral ground of hey we should be nice to one another yeah um or we should do nice things for people mm -hmm. um so i thought it was dope and was just like yeah let's do this um that book was intense because at ccs admittedly i was not the best student um or i won't say i wasn't the best student but you know depression things like that things that are real happen mm -hmm. and they hinder how you work mm -hmm. um and it was like a competitive environment mm -hmm. so like having to think about all the things that i learned at ccs when applying it to this book like was like wow like i was doing the storyboarding mm -hmm. i was like doing angles i'm like okay this is all the stuff like my professors talked about that i struggle with so that it was uh, a journey like in my own mind just being like okay it's okay if you struggle with it just kind of draw through and mm -hmm. get the sketches right and you'll be fine and mm -hmm. I just stuck to that and getting the line art and the color and everything else came a lot easier once I started getting those storyboards like fleshed out um but yeah yes that Lupita book is fire <laughs> That is a wonderful book. I, I'm I'm all about the representation in my baby's book. So I'm just like, give me woke baby. Give me <laughs> yes. here. So I want all I was just gonna ask you, is your illustrated children's book still available for sale? Um, I would have to check with Margie and see, but I will let you know. And I don't know if you could retroactively like do something about that, but I will let you know for sure. Okay. And if not, I'll see you my copy. Well, you need your copy. You're the illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel in the future you would do more children's books? Or what do you see for the future of your career? What types of illustration or design are you passionate about working on moving forward? Um, Absolutely. I think once I got over the hump of feeling like like imposter syndrome about mm -hmm. doing it, um, I felt much better and confident in doing that mm -hmm. type of work. So like... And the next one, it would I would find something else that would like I would want to push like perspective, for example, which this book kind of lacks. But that would be something I would like to tackle. And things I study now that I'm just like, okay, I want to bring this into if I had the opportunity again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, absolutely, I would love to do another children's book. That's like, awesome. Yes, <laughs> I always think about the the type of artwork that illustrators put into children's books are some of the illustrations that we remember most throughout our lives. Like I have books that I got from my daughter that I remember, like, I don't know what age I was. I was younger <laughs> than five, but like Snowy Day will never not be in my brain as an illustration, yeah. you know, or like 
the very hungry caterpillar. Like there's iconic artwork yes. in our, our minds that we we digest more very young. So I think that's an important role that you know children's book illustrators have because it's like some of our introduction to art. Like if you don't come from a home where art is everywhere, it's an important important role. So let's go. Absolutely. Like they're embarrassingly. I was like really into Pokemon and they had the books back then and man like those like I would go through those my mom is just like I'm not buying no more like you better reread them or something but like <laughs> but like I would go through those for the artwork they were kind of mm -hmm. like not graphic novels but it was more reading more so than illustrations but like I would just go through those and yes like you would see the art and just be like, wow, this is great. Like, mm -hmm. and back then that book, those books were like only black and white. So like, mm -hmm. you're only just seeing value. And it was just like, this is so good. Like value in line work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, that's exciting. I'm, I'm hoping to get at least one of your children's book, if not more in the future. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit let's rewind a little bit and talk about prior to your career because i know you've done a lot of design for a lot of different clients a lot of different things but when you were in high school what kind of work did you want to do in your career like did you have an exact thing that you wanted to do or were you just interested in art what were you like in high school i think in high school i was just interested in art i had no idea like what that meant I just knew that I could kind of draw and mm -hmm. I like doing that and uh, it, it kind of just was like this is something I'm really good at so I'm just gonna do it and mm -hmm. like I would build up all my classes mostly around art I had no I like I had no direction no idea what I was doing like I'd been to art classes but there was never like a you can be a footwear designer mm -hmm. you can be a product designer you can go into ad like I didn't have any of that going into high school or even leaving high school. It was just kind of like, I'm just making things and I like it. <laughs> so if you didn't have that leaving high school, did you go to a community college first before applying to CCS or did you go to another school first? Um, I went to Moore College of Art and Design in Philadelphia for my freshman year. Mm -hmm. um, and that was amazing. Like I, I, saw there like a lot of the things I could do but a lot of those things I was just like okay I don't like it was very hands-on so like creating things that last so one of our assignments was creating a chair out of cardboard that held, held someone mm -hmm. um and gaining that critical thinking but it was like okay I don't want to be a furniture designer <laughs> like I don't want to be a product designer in the mm -hmm. sense of I'm actually building the product. Right. product. You're like, I want to so, work in the 2D world. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think that helped me like learn what I didn't want to do while mm -hmm. it was still teaching me critical thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I was like, okay, I for sure know I want to draw. Like, mm -hmm. that is like absolute like I need to be drawing in whatever I'm doing whether it's a sketching phase whatever so that narrowed things down for me um but unfortunately for like for me although I was loving my experience in Philadelphia I could not afford more um, it was super expensive I was getting like a six thousand uh, dollar scholarship six thousand dollars when it's like 42k <laughs> like okay I'm gonna have to go back home mm -hmm. um and so that's when I applied for CCS mm -hmm. I was actually really discouraged to like go to CCS at first because I had a portfolio review in high school and it was bad oh <laughs> and I was just like oh I don't I don't know that school is scary oh um, but looking at the options coming from more I was like okay Wayne doesn't have what I want. CCS for sure will let me draw. Um, and so that's how I ended up choosing to go to CCS. Mm -hmm. And immediately from in there, I, I like I took my credits, was kind of between a freshman, freshman and sophomore, mm -hmm. um, and was just like, okay, well, I'm going into graphic design. Girl, I did graphic design at CCS. It was just like, maybe not. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe that's not my career. Um, so <laughs> I ended up switching to illustration the year mm -hmm. after, and mm -hmm. that's where I felt like I was doing something that I like to do and mm -hmm. that it it was perspective of being, like I had the prospect of making this a career. Mm -hmm. Um, now tell me yeah. this because you you pivoted from graphic design to illustration because you're a dope illustrator you draw your face <laughs> off um but you still do a lot of design in your career are there elements of what you learned that first year in graphic design that you still use today absolutely like remember type one where <laughs> yes <laughs> type one where like they made you like i Okay, characters and figuring out how to place characters and how to create some kind of composition with characters mm -hmm. was very hard for me. Like, I think one of the biggest things I struggle with it is and was composition. Mm -hmm. I, I know, like, I mean, I can have my three rules. I can have my Fibonacci sequence. I can have everything and still struggle with laying mm -hmm. out a composition. Mm -hmm. And so that... I think was what really like broke me um was type one was because i'm like okay i don't i how many times can, i don't know how to lay these characters out to make something that's a compelling composition mm -hmm. and then on top of that have a paragraph block that looks pristine like mm -hmm. the kerning is always off like my letting is too far like it's too many gaps in between like everything just felt like a challenge within mm -hmm. just laying down that piece so i think now looking back i'm like oh this it's not necessarily easy but it's like man this if i hadn't been introduced to that i probably wouldn't be where i am mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. those yeah. like those concepts stuck with me because i was so like scarred by them <laughs> that like even when I went to illustration it was like okay I gotta get this composition right this composition the composition like like stressing myself out and then when you go into like perspective drawing which I also struggle with like that is a big part of it is the mm -hmm. composition and mm -hmm. it was just CCS intimidated me a lot mm -hmm. and then like kind of bullied me <laughs> but like not in a bad way like in retrospect because all of those little things that I was like really scared of or mm -hmm. really challenged me or that I tried to run away with like run away from like those all came back in career roles mm -hmm. and I had to like work through them mm -hmm. and I think the 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 first time I really had to like do that and work through it was when I went to Quicken Loans mm -hmm. um I was at actually at one of the other companies within the family of companies uh amrock which is a title company so like already i was like who okay titles i don't this is boring <laughs> i don't know any i don't even know about like a title to a house like i was i was There's so a learning like, curve there yeah it, everything it was a lot to take in but i had an amazing um mentor mm -hmm. um chris at amrock and he like he brought up all the the things that I just talked to you about, like that you want like, to okay. run away from. Yeah, he was like, "Okay, so we're gonna tackle this this way." And like, I, man, like all of those things just came back, and he hit hard on those. And like, those were published works going out, like mm -hmm. for a major title company that people like read these things. Like, and he was like, "Yeah, this needs to be uh, perfect because we have like conversions." Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Um, so like they started me off like with internal things there, but by the end of my internship with Chris, that mentorship, like I was doing external work and like that felt great. And I felt like I not necessarily overcame, but I had that in my arsenal now. Like mm -hmm. I'm skilled with this. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the things I tell a lot of students about art school. I'm like, Yes, if you love being creative, if you love drawing, you love painting, sculpting, like this is a great way to pursue that. But like while those things are fun and art school can be fun, it is still college. It's rigorous. Like it's not going to yeah. be blow off school compared to like a university. Like in, in many ways, it can be more difficult because, Absolutely. you know, you can't wait to the last minute. 
on an illustration. You can't wait <laughs> the last minute on a painting. Like it takes time. Yeah. Right? And, and so and um, out, just hours. Like and yeah. I mean, even to your point, like not to go against any of my friends who went to a university or anything like that, but like we were in six hour classes, like mm -hmm. with a lunch break, maybe 30 minutes or something. Like most of our classes were studios. Like mm -hmm. their liberal arts was the only class that we had that was what, two hours? <laughs> so like, that's our shortest class. And yeah. you're in there and then you have to take what you were working on there outside of like, outside of the classroom, you're carrying your stuff over to the ACB or wherever or home. And then you're working on the same project for like a week. Mm -hmm. And it's just not to, and then you have your other class that you also had six hours. Right. Well, not one, that video. <laughs> yeah, not like, one six hour class a week, maybe three. <laughs> Yeah, and you're working on all of those, and they all need to be done by next week or two weeks, and then you're on to the next project. Like, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it is rigorous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that's, I think that helps. I tell people, and I don't know if other people have this experience, but I was like, there's nothing that you'll do beyond CCS that's, in my experience, more difficult than CCS. I was like, the level yeah. of rigor you face there, like, once you get through that, if you go to a job and you're juggling multiple projects for multiple clients or whatever, it's like, oh, I know what this feels like, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's wild now. Like, I'll have, I think I have, like, four projects that's due on, by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we have Monday off. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just like, they'll be fine on Tuesday. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's crazy how... I won't say I'm great with time management because Lord knows I'm not. But like, I feel confident that I'll get whatever my project is, like whatever needs to be done, I'll meet that deadline. Like I feel mm -hmm. confident in that all the time now. Like mm -hmm. at CCS, I was never confident. I was always late. Like, y'all, I barely scraped by. But like. <laughs> but you made it. And that's what I made it. And I, and I took away so many good experiences from like just like little pockets of like advice from Dave or Gil like that really just gave me that push that I take today like mm -hmm. I remember one time I had Don for senior studio was it Kilpatrick <laughs> yeah I had Don Kilpatrick uh, I had actually I had fashion illustration with him mm -hmm. child I don't know how I got an A in that class <laughs> but <laughs> All I remember was I was pretty much I was really depressed throughout like my whole college career but I remember Don just being like you like most of the battle like 75% of the battle is just coming mm -hmm. and he was like I could work with that if you mm -hmm. just come and like that like I applied that to so many things in life afterwards, mm. like, especially that class, because I came and, like I said, got the A just because I was coming and, mm. like, willing to work and show up. Mm. But, like, showing up has been one of the major parts of, I think, why I am where I am again. Like, mm. just taking little pockets of advice that really just go a long way. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, that's a huge piece of advice. Yeah, like, just showing up. And it's hard, especially when you're depressed. Like, I failed Kathy's class because I did the work. It was actually funny. I did all my assignments in that class and got, I think, Bs on those. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't show up, she ended up just being like, hey, I'm sorry. But, like, and she understood. She knew what I was going through. But she was just like, hey, I, I cannot let you pass this test. Yeah. Yeah. And I missed that. I think it's three classes mm -hmm. um so yeah it was just like and that was junior year so when I got to Don he's like just show up I know what happened last year like just be present mm -hmm. like that helped so much that's awesome that you you know there's faculty there that like understand because I think it's it's not uncommon uh that students come to CCS who deal with depression or anxiety or have you know different learning challenges that make it difficult to you know hang with the rigor of the school you know what I'm yes. saying 
Um, and so it's good to, to hear that you had a professor. I'm sure many students have similar stories where it's like, I want to work with you. Like, I'm here to help you succeed. Yep. But you have to meet me, you know, somewhere in the middle, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be with the artwork. That was, I think that was the key. Mm -hmm. like was just seeing that it didn't have to be with my art it just had to be with my actual presence mm -hmm. in this class mm -hmm. and that was something that I was like okay I can work with that too like mm -hmm. even though I'm commuting it's snow on 75 I <laughs> I think I can I can do that mm -hmm. um and I think that was maybe probably the like you just made me realize that was probably the key part it was like, okay, he's not asking me to be, like, a great artist right now. Mm -hmm. He's not asking for the best illustrations. Just mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one thing I tell a lot of students when they're, like, like you mentioned, like, CCS kind of intimidates you. There are a lot of students who feel that way just coming in from high school. Like, we're not expecting you to be an excellent, perfect art. Like, our job is to teach yeah. as an institution you know, like, come and we can help you get to where you want to go. Um, but like, don't don't feel like, you know, you have to be perfect. And I know a lot of students, um, similar to, you know, students and graduates, we all deal with like that imposter syndrome of like, am I supposed to yeah. be here? Do I know what I'm doing? Like, I'm looking at this person comparing. They're myself. so much better. Like, how can I compete? And it's like, man, that competition mindset. I think mm -hmm. all art schools have it. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you are looking at someone else's or you're looking at four different people and you already know, like, they're set on their career path, you're just like, what do I do then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you have people who are painting. I For you, I'm sure you've had, I don't know, people who do motion graphics. Like, yeah. Like, my art teacher in high school didn't teach. I learned graphic design from a classmate. So how are you all already knowing how to use Photoshop? Like, yeah. 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 yeah, like, people were mad advanced. Like, I'm like, why you even come? Like, you could just freelance right now. Like, you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like you said, I mean, it, it is when you feel like you have that imposter syndrome and not realizing that, I think, not realizing that you don't have to do what other people are doing. Like, mm -hmm. there is some kind of subset. There's some little form of artwork that you can do that people will appreciate. Mm -hmm. Or, like, a certain piece of artwork you do. Or the fact, like, of who you are. Like, yes. I think, like, a lot of my early, like, pieces being bought was just from friends being like yo this is Sade she's cool whatever like mm -hmm. it really could just be anything that defines mm -hmm. you as an artist mm -hmm. that makes people interested in your work mm -hmm. yeah I think for as many people as there are there are that many artist voices that are necessary to be heard I know last week we uh talked with an il another illustration alum uh Cherie and hey. she did illustrations of her hair journey. And she was talking about starting events for people to do coloring books with uh, illustrations she did. She's like, the first one, like 300 people showed up. And I'm like, those Yo. people resonate with your voice, with your story, yeah. with your illustrations. You know, that that out there. So I, I, I just, I'm hammering this home for the kids. But my high school yes. kids, you know, comparison is the thing. Joy, you know, your voice is necessary. No matter how good someone else may seem, they're not you. Right. Yeah, they. And there's only one Shawnee Robinson. <laughs> right. So yeah, your voice is equally important. Um, Thank you, Brandy. As so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop hogging all the questions. I want to make sure for folks who are tuning in, if you have questions for Shawnee, illustration, about design, about um, being a CCS student, a graduate, any of these things that we've been talking about, make sure you pop them in the question box here on Instagram. I want to ask. Uh, one more question, then we're going to yeah. take it to see if the audience has some questions. Um, so I know you, you, you spoke to this quite a bit already um, about some of the things you've gained from CCS, but what would you say is the most important thing that you gained from your time at CCS, whether it's a life lesson, a way of being, a relationship? What would you say is the most important thing you gained from your time at CCS? Who I think the most important thing I gained had nothing to do with art at CCS, but it was the bringing together of community. Mm -hmm. um, like, at CCS, okay, so, like, I had some stuff happening at CCS where it had me 
to be housed in ABC, I mean, the ACB. Mm -hmm. um, like, so I couldn't be at home. Like, I, mm -hmm. they moved me in under a special circumstance. Mm -hmm. And Valerie, is Valerie still there? Valerie Weiss? And yes, and counseling, yes. CCS Wellness. I love Valerie so much. Like, I can't even express, I'm about to cry. She is amazing. But her, Miss um, Kim, and the security. Shout out to Miss Kim. Shout out to Miss Kim. Like her, and then Brandon. I think Brandon may be in here. Him, Horatio, Egby. Like even I know that we were not apart, but just like seeing people who I can look up to. It was like seeing people who were gonna be there for me, mm -hmm. like in an art community sense. Like I know mm -hmm. I said it had nothing to do with art, but like. It was, it felt like I could not fail or I had to work just to be with my peers, like not mm -hmm. even keep up with my peers. It was like, I just want to be around these mm -hmm. people because they have good energy and are looking out. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was my biggest takeaway from CCS was mm -hmm. the people. Yeah, that's, that's, that's always my thing. It's, that's always yeah. my thing. It's like classes are great. You learn some cool skills, but like the community at CCS, yeah, you're like, not gonna find that anywhere else, man. And it was a range. Like, sorry, um, we had like <laughs> I was struggling in illustration. I think junior year, like I said, uh, with Kathy, I went over to Gilda. Like Gilda was there. Like mm -hmm. Gilda's Gilda was not even. Like, she's like, okay, illustration, so why are you coming to me? And, like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so maybe I want to do fine arts. I don't know. But, like, even Gilda took the time to just be there and mm -hmm. mentor me throughout whatever, like, artist crisis identity I was going through, like, identity crisis I was going through. Like, it was just the community of people, artists just being there. And mm -hmm. that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You gonna give me tears? So I'm gonna. What were you say? Rest in peace, Gilda. But she's yes, a, such an amazing soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna see if our audience has any questions. I see a lot of people in the chat like Miss Kim because she's Miss Kim. She, yes, yes. Legend. Um, she's mm -hmm. one of our amazing. That's the about the community is like everybody is amazing in the community like security yeah. guards you work in the cafeteria like it ain't just the fact everybody. <laughs> everybody you get to know them and they get to know you and it's like man it's it's tight it's <laughs> like it's really it's really tight knit i love that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and rachel like rachel jessica ryan Corey. i'm naming people but like it was important to see them working and then mm -hmm. that motivated me to keep going Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see some of those are uh, some of those alum are in here and have been featured alumni lives too. So I know Corey did uh Prague Design CCS Alumni Live. So if you want to check out yes. his story and what he's been up to, make sure to watch that. Um, Sketch game crazy. So proud you of one of those people. I was like, you got this. You got this. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. like court, like every product he came through when we were just chilling in the lounge was just like bro like you're not hired by whoever you want to be hired by it it's like sophomore year right <laughs> right all right like, bro, so bro. i don't see any questions from here so i'm gonna ask one of my big questions this is my big juicy question because i think it's one of the most important ones knowing what you know now about your journey from high school through your college experience and all the ups and downs and where you are in your career knowing everything that you know now if you could get in the magical time machine and go talk to your senior year self in high school what advice Ooh. would you give yourself about pursuing your path of art and design senior year self high school mm -hmm. i definitely would have told myself okay you're gonna go to ccs first like you're just gonna go there you're gonna stay home <laughs> Um, I think, I mean, okay, I want to be delicate with that because I have a really close friend that I'm still tied with to this day, like ride or die, who, who I met at more. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't want to like take away from bypass those, that relationship. I guess. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. take away from those relationships. Mm -hmm. Man. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't have done that over. I think. Perhaps maybe when I got 
once I, everything with Moore happened after my senior year self, I was just like, go to art school, go to Moore. After I came back, I think I would have just taken everything I was doing more seriously and being more inquisitive about the things that I wanted to do. Like, I'm a really curious person at heart. Like, for example, this computer, I don't know if y'all can see it. It's a computer mm -hmm. under here. I built it. Like, and it was just after, like, constant research, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, I think if I would have had the same drive and curiosity that I had for my hobbies and applied mm -hmm. that to something that was a possible career mm -hmm. and also not looking at art as not a hobby, mm -hmm. like I looked at that as work, I think that would have changed me in so many ways. So like seeing yourself would just be like, take art as a hobby and learn as much as you can about all the art that you're interested in that mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah I think that's that was good cool. advice that's huge yeah. cause I, I, that's uh, something that I find a lot of students are like I just like to draw I like art I don't know I'm gonna just figure it out but it's like I yeah. can tell you every single character in the, the five year history of this series that I love you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they do the research yeah. for things that they do uh, outside of art even though that may be the path they want to go down so that's huge advice yeah, yeah. Like, Man, like you said, like I can tell you everything about Game of Thrones at that point. Why can't I get my different line works down, like, mm -hmm. and not treat it as, oh, I'm slaving at doing this, or oh, I got to do this just to get this A or this grade. Like, mm -hmm. it should have just been like, oh, that that line is crazy. Oh, I like that brush, or you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Like, and a lot of people who go to CCS do that. Mm -hmm. I was not one of those people, so I think that became a huge like barrier for me because mm -hmm. I was just looking at all of it as work yeah yeah that's a good point that's a good Thanks. point <sighs> I love talking to I love that you all are so interesting <laughs> stories and beautiful perspective um is there anything else you want to share with our high school audience or some of our folks who are tuning in before we end our live today I just want to say that when I first got the CCS, like your senior show exhibit was so good. And Aww. I loved it. And I was just like, man, Brandy's so dope. And it was wild because I'm sorry, I just gotta like gas you up because you're an incredible designer. Um but like it was weird because it was just like I kind of want to say something, but also, like, I haven't seen Brandy or, like, Brandon since, like, Bates. And For I don't know if they know. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I don't know if they know who I am or, like, if I'm being a weirdo. But, like, I, man, like, seeing that series, it, it, it was just so beautiful because it was just like, yo, like, black people working at? Like, it was just like... <laughs> Like, it was just inspiring because it's, like, represent that representation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, like, professional work. Like, it mm -hmm. was just clean. And, like, it's, like, the stuff I mostly saw, like, even with illustrators, it was not Black illustrators. It was not Black mm -hmm. women illustrators. It was fan art. And not to take mm -hmm. it away from fan art, but it was, like, this is quality company work. Like, mm -hmm. that. And guess what? You passed the torch. <laughs> look at what you're doing now and say look that person looks like me and that's what they're doing that's what I'm capable of you know yeah. and man I, I love that I hope people are like me and my dreads like <laughs> up in fucking corporate office oh I'm sorry I can't say this you but up in, up in corporate <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like no, like you see the struggles that some of us have and like with mm -hmm. just hair or something like that. So it's nice to be like, yeah, I'm in my dress. I'm in corporate. I'm in New York. Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very grateful. Like, super grateful. Baby! <laughs> yeah, that's Arrow. So no. that's probably my cue to end the live. But <laughs> yeah. I just want to say, Shade, I'm so proud of you and the journey you, that you've Brandy. had and all that you've overcome to get where you are because you're doing amazing things in the world. You are the representation that, you know, students need. I know your high school self 
must be amazingly proud of what you get to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I'm just grateful that you shared your story and your journey with us on CCS Alumni Live today. Yes, no, I'm, I'm super thankful for you having me. I really appreciate it. I can't, I cannot wait to see everybody else. <laughs> And, and that's a good point. For those who are tuning in, make sure you tune in. CCS Alumni Live is a weekly interview series where we talk with CCS graduates about their journey. Um, this will be recorded and saved on IGTV so you can watch it back again. And it'll be on our admissions YouTube. Um, last thing before we go, Shade, if people want to check out more of your work, where should they go to check you out? This Instagram website, plug plug um, things. I will say my website, although y'all, I have not updated that since I started working. But What's the website? It's, it's okay. It's my name, Sade Robinson dot com. Uh, S A D E R O B I N S O N dot com. Go but check yeah, it out, guys. Check me out. Go get inspired. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Sade, and thanks everyone who's tuned in. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, Bye Randy. <laughs>